Hello again, everyone, and welcome out to Currency 101 series. This is Socket from Maverick Currencies here. And in this video, we'll be talking specifically about the Japanese yen and more importantly, taking a look at the dollar yen outlook as we are hitting some key technical levels. As uh, anybody that's been trading Forex and either have exposed to uh, to the Japanese yen economy, again, you know the, the yen has been the biggest mover so far this year. So this is uh, an historic move that we don't really get to witness as much. You know, if you've been trading for the last 10 years, I mean, this is a, a move that has stunned a lot of people, uh, including myself. You know, I've been trading with Maverick Currencies for for about 12, 13 years. And again, we haven't seen the Japanese yen rises to these levels uh, that we have seen recently. And again, you know, pushing some key technical points that we haven't broken for for the last 20 to 30 years i mean talk about the dollar yen uh, specifically uh, dollar yen is at a level that we haven't really seen i mean if you uh, take a look at the chart here going back to 2002 so uh 20 years i mean that's a long period to see something happen again so there's a lot of uh a lot of things to consider when you're looking at Japanese yen. Uh, a lot of traders are looking at this and say, well, okay, when is it going to stop? Uh, where can I find some resistance um, or some sort of shorter term bottom in the Japanese yen as the yen is actually in a free fall? And whenever you get a currency that's in a free fall, um, this is where it makes it a bit more challenging because there's, uh, there's, this, there's not a whole lot of technical levels where it will take a pause um, but it just continues, and the path of uh, least resistance is where it's moving towards. Um, but like anything else, if everything has its uh, life. Everything has a, a bit of a move that will come to an end. And um, as we witnessed, the Japanese yen kind of moved back in March. It did come to an end in late April, had a nice little bounce, and then we started to resume that downtrend in late May as well. And again, at this point, we are now looking at another extension to that down move that we witnessed back in March. So just to give a context of you know how big that move is, just to look at the from the top to bottom here, you can see this was about a 12% move in the Japanese yen uh, as a whole. Again, I'm looking at a currency basket where we take a look at eight major currencies and we pair them together. So we're looking at eight major um, the currencies uh, from the uh, from, for the Japanese yen. Um, but if you want to take a look at dollar yen uh, specifically, um, dollar yen, let's take a look at what's the percentage move that we have seen so far. And same thing, let's just draw some lines and take a look at this move actually started, you know, back March where the dollar yen was at about 114. And you can see this is about a 16 to a 17 percent move. I mean, this is a massive move. If you go, if you look at currencies, you know, they don't move as much unless there is something that's out of the world um, again if you look at the movement that we saw back in 2020 you know we, we saw some crazy moves happen at that time too and you can see that those ex extraordinary times uh, the yen actually moved the dollar yen actually moved by like eight percent so we are seeing this that's at an epic proportion and uh, it's a uh, as we continue to extend like this it makes it very difficult for anybody that wants to jump on at this point. But we also need to understand the potential risks that come with it. So let's talk about fundamentals. Why we are seeing this do with this yen move. And this again comes down to uh, a lot of the, uh, the, uh, the policies that are set by Bank of Japan. And just to dive a little bit deeper into the topic, uh, you need to take a look at what the Bank of Japan has been doing um, in terms of um, their quantitative easing or the QQE, uh, we we did uh, we did saw that change that took place in uh, from from Bank of Japan back in 2016, where they adopted a new policy. And under the new policy, they were uh, targeting uh, yields by something called yield curve control. And we can actually take a look at the yields by going to the 10 year, um, and so the symbol for that JP. Uh, 10, 10 year, um, 10 Y. Uh, we'll take a look at this chart, and you notice that the yields has been running higher. We are hit, sitting at about uh, 0 0.25 percent. So rising yields is a very common thing that, that we're noticing across the world. Let me take a look at 
the the Japan yields. I mean, you can go to Australia, you can go to Canada. I mean, the yields has been rising at a at an epic levels or epic proportion as well. So now with the yield curve, the Bank of Japan is trying to um, you know maintain and initially they wanted to maintain a a zero percent. And then back in back in February, they did talk about uh, the upper band of that limit was about 0.25. And notice that the yields are actually rose up to about 0.25%. And then they announced that, okay, they will be doing unlimited amount of, uh, you know, uh, the, the buying of bonds just to keep um, just to keep the yields actually at the uh, at the current levels. Um, so every time the, the yields start to rise, there's Bank of Japan trying to push it lower. So this is not something that's new. You know, with central banks, they do a lot of different things to try to control uh, the, the, the exchange rate by doing these interventions. And by Bank of Japan being actively involved, um, this is a very costly, costly uh, way to keep up with this policy because as they are offering or they're trying to buy unlimited amounts, you know, this they have to print money. And that's what's doing is that it's actually uh, just to fight that uh, rising yields, they have to, you know, do the epic proportion for these uh, for these uh, quantitative easing, which again puts the currency lower because the more and more uh, they're printing, the more and more is out there, and that's going to be very negative for the currency. So it's actually important to take a look at where the Japanese yen is. As you can see, um, taking a look at the yen movement, I mean, it all started when. Uh, early this year, I mean, we actually saw this move that took place back in March. So you can see that the, as the yields rose up, uh, the Japanese yen, again, mark the timeline, which is about, as we go in and s scroll it in, again, this is about March 8th or March 9th. Now let's go to the yen. And you'll see the similar timeline about March 10th or 9th and 10th is when this move actually started. So yields had a lot of this... Uh, this is what's actually driving a lot of movement in a lot of these currencies. So uh, with the Bank of Japan now facing this uh, dilemma um, and with this huge commitment, um, something has to change uh, in order for in order for the yen to stop its fall. And that has to come with any sort of change that will take place from Bank of Japan if they try to uh, revise their policy. Otherwise, based on the current uh, track, uh, this is uh, this is uh, not a good thing as the rapid decline of a currency um, has a lot of negative implications as well. And I'm pretty sure this is something is a, a trop, uh, pressing concern for Bank of Japan. So Bank of Japan is going to be either do nothing and let the let the yen continue to fall further and further or they try to make any sort of changes to it. And again, for this, it's hard to time it when will happen, what will happen but what we have to understand is that what we are up against. We don't control the price action. We control how we react to it. And this is uh, this is something that I have heard a very common thing from across the traders. You know, I haven't seen this kind of move. And that's true. You know, this is the kind of move that, you know, you, you know, this is going back in time. I mean, you have to go 20, 30 years before in order to see those uh, times when, you know, these, these things happened. And then uh, that followed with some sort of, intervention or some sort of uh, regime change from from the central bank so uh, it's a matter of time but right now it's uh, it's almost like drawing a a line in the sand that I can look at a lot of charts we can take a look at the, the Japanese yen just as a basket again you can see we were we actually back at the 2015 lows but even though if you go back to a monthly chart you know we are at levels that we haven't seen for for a long time so let's talk about dollar yen so I want to talk about dollar yen because, again, the question is that is there a figure that is in the Bank of Japan mind that, okay, well, if it crosses a certain threshold, then we got to act. And for that, uh, they can be only looking at the dollar yen cross because that's that's the main currency pair um, that, you know, they will look at for any sort of currency exchange. Now, looking at the dollar yen, uh, this is something that I've been talking about. This This worked out actually really perfectly here. As we talk about the breakout and potential 134 as a target, so this thing has now uh, hit my target, and now question is that okay, where do we go from here? This is the level that we tested back in um, back in 2000 and 
one, it seems like. And after that, we actually did back off. So this is a huge window of this breakout that that's that happened at about 124 now to 134. That's a thousand pip range. Even though if this thing continued to move in a range, I'm okay with that. Uh, but question is, is this uh, where it can take a pause or it can actually push higher? Because even though if it pushes higher from here, I mean, the next level of resistance that you're looking at is about 145. So there's still another thousand pip to the upside on this range. But again, I'm looking at a monthly chart. And remember, um, monthly charts could late, take a lot longer for them to develop. Um, so we are we are now in our context, we're looking at 2002 levels. And we can still actually go up and that that's actually 1998 levels when we hit that high. So we have to pay attention to the Bank of Japan, any sort of central bank uh, activity, if they have any sort of uh, threshold that they talk about before they have to come in and you know do something about it because um, you know there's something has to change for 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 the yen slide to actually uh, pause uh, for a bit. So I wanted to talk about the Bank of Japan and the yields here. So everybody is more um, in line with what's going on, and instead of trying to you know try to catch a falling knife because you know the dollar the yen has moved so much then it doesn't matter which pair you look at you know we we we're looking at thousands of pips sorry uh hundreds of pips on um on this uh on this uh these currency pairs that we can actually now um look for some retracements and again that that make a bit of a, a interesting outlook when it comes to risk to reward but right now it's all about probabilities and you know yen reversal it needs to it needs to happen it will show in in in, in charts here, um, even though going a four hour to an hour, as you can see that we are continuing to slide this, and we haven't really gotten above the twenty to fifty moving average, and that's the first indication where you can say, well, the price has gotten above it, and that's where the momentum start to change. You can see that back in March to April, we actually stayed below this twenty to fifty moving average until uh, the twenty first April, and you can see where we got above the twenty to fifty. And that's where the momentum change that kind of took place. It's the same scenario here. We look, we are very much overextended, far away from the moving averages. So eventually there will be a bounce. And that's something you have to be prepared for as a trader. When that happens, then you know when to exit. Then that's when you know when the, when the party's over. So when we are so far stretched out, this is just an example of an of a, of a elastic band. Like it needs to kind of revert back to the mean. So we are very far stretched on this, and we might continue going further, um, but eventually we'll, we'll we'll see something change. So uh, the risk then rises along with uh, along with that extension. So you have to really, um, you know, as, as a benchmark, pay attention to dollar yen. I mean, so far nothing has pointed out to a pause. Just a, a long long term chart that you can take a look at on a monthly on dollar yen and see that one thirty four. The highest at that time, we got about 135. That's the range we're looking at. And maybe we'll see a bit of a stall that happens here. And that's where you know the dollar yen uh, is likely to take a pause here. Or maybe that's where the yen is likely to take a pause. So watch out these levels. And we'll be in touch in the following weeks and see how this thing unfolds. Thanks for watching. <laughs>